In this video, I'm going to talk about what is mean by cystic fibrosis. How does it compare with the normal cell type? What is the reason for some people developing cystic fibrosis? Is it a genetic disease? So, for us to be under, to be able to understand and appreciate this kind of disorder, we better understand and start off explaining how does normal cell, specific cell, regulates. Okay, so for that, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna try to design like a spe the specific cell inside your lung because it's that's where the cystic fibrosis mainly occur. So, this is the apical side of your lung. Sorry for bad drawing. Okay, so this is apical side. This is vasolateral side. Just denoting that this is like intracellular, this is extracellular. And basal line, apical side. This is like inside here is a cytosol. This is the um, intracellular lung, can be lung cell. This is like extracellular fluid, right? This is extra fluid. All right, so in a normal cell of your lung, there's a one specific transporter, co-transporter, it's very important, it's very big, that um, it hasn't really, really it has a really important role, like that. So, what does it do? It uses secondary active transport because remember, remember that there is a ion homeostasis going on. That is, we have a this is an inside cell. We have a low Na plus, low Na plus, high K plus, right? So, we have. We are using, the, as, as I have in the previous year, electrochemical gradient of sodium, because there's plenty of sodium here, to pump three sodium in, three K plus in, and six specific chloride in. Now, okay, so now think about it. Now, this, this pump is just not like after one, specific like pump it pumps in these three sodium three potassium and six chloride now it does so for each one pump so after each one pump it transports two chloride ions one sodium ions and three potassium ions so as a whole that after each three pump this amount of ions would become into the cell now we have that amount after this amount is being built what else do we see is that we see the one specific cell here. You're building up the concentration of chloride inside and then outside. So there is one symporter. This is a symporter. Chloride symporter. That would essentially pumps the six chloride ion that is highly concentrated concentrated gradient here. Down is electrochemical gradient. Down is electrochemical gradient, or down is so down the electrochemical gradient, it will pump it out outside. Now, so we have six chloride going from inside to outside, but we still are not diffusing about these three sodium. So there must be a regulator that what happened to this three. So it's easy. We have a one. Um, let me make this one a bit longer. It's that messy. So sorry. Good thing. Then we have one potassium channel, like this is a K plus importer. We also have a sodium pump. Sodium pump is very important because it uses the sodium here. So we have high sodium here. It uses the electrochemical gradient from the potassium. Um, there, so it pumps itself out, right? Pumps itself out. It and as a result, it brings two potassium inside. Okay, it's an antiporter. But 
it doesn't use a secondary active transport because it uses hard electrolysis of ATP. Okay, so it hard electrolysis ATP to ADP plus PI as energy. So it's not going to use electrophilic with gradient whatsoever. Now we have this sodium three sodium out. We still have two potassium inside, and we have two three potassium inside. So we need to get that one out as well. We don't have. We don't want to build so much potassium here. So what do we do? Is that we have five potassium here. That would be simple out to here using this potassium simporter, right? So we have this five potassium being simported outside as well, and the reason for for this meditation is coming from it's the electrochemical gradient, okay? Because we have built up so much potassium here, and as as I talked in my previous videos as well, if you have too much of positive charge, they want to repel themselves. And this repulsion energy gives you more free energy. It's favorable, favorable delta G, and hence we have getting the potassium out as energy. So we don't need, we do not need, do not need ATP because of the electrochemical gradient. All right, now that's done. And remember, we put out. We need to. Each cell must regulate the ion neutrality, right? Ion neutrality means they must reach the specific charge. The charge there can be like six negative charge here. They must be diffused out. Um, how how it's been diffused out? By because by giving a, giving it a positive charge. Note that this is a not just a single layer inside the lung. There's plenty of this. So this is like another one. The key here is that it is being, this is known as transcellular pathway, okay? This is transcellular pathway. Now, if it goes from here, that's parcellular pathway. Okay? And this parcellular pathway that has like this integral protein, this is like a really bad integral protein, but this is like this, imagine this is like this integral protein, it pumps in 6Na+, plus. All right, so they're giving us with 6Na+, plus as well, so diffusing the charge. And the important part here that distinguishes normal cell and the cystic fibrosis cell is that, so we have the 6 sodium and chloride, presence of them on this membrane, because this is a membrane, on the membrane of the lung cells will increase the osmolarity of that specific type of cell. And by increasing osmolarity, this essentially allows the water to be go inside this part of the intercellular lung in the membrane using something known as aquaporins. Aquaporins are the specific channels that allow, specific, they allow the water to be passing through from one side to another side, okay? So imagine there's like plenty of aquaporins here and Aquaporins allow H2O to pass to be here, right? So it allows the water to be here. And this is important because it washes off everything. It washes off the sodium and stuff. This it washes off the salt, it washes off the mucus that is formed, and hence it doesn't allow growth of any specific bacteria. But the thing is, the, the people who has a cystic fibrosis, those people lack a specific D, the, those who lack this CFDI, this is known as CFDI gene, right? CFDI gene is responsible for formation of this six CF, um, this chloride transport same product. So those people have a deformed chloride, tra chloride transport, meaning they cannot no longer pass this six chloride from here to intracellular, to intracellular of the line. Apical side chloride transporter, is deformed, okay? So as a result, chloride cannot be passed through, sodium will not be passed through without not observing an intracellular organ. We are not ob observing the increase in osmolarity of the cell, and as a result, no more aquaporins um, allow the water to be passing through. And hence, we are observing a lot of the, um, as a result, no washing through has been happening, and um, mucus is building up, right? This is like the mucus. All right, this is like a mu 
mucus is building up. And the mucus is bad because it's a very good, it's like a perfect, it's like a pizza. Pizza for the bacteria site infection. Bacteria will deform there, they form a biofilm. I have a video on that too if you want, you can have a look at it. So they form biofilm, they form colonies, multiple grow and replicate. And this would lead to, if not treated, death of the person who has cystic fibrosis because bacteria infection in your lung is very dangerous. And you don't want that. So that's why people in the early days, they used to die. But nowadays you can have growing the um, gene therapy and all this stuff. They can like use the antibiotics, for example, to at least remove the like, kill the bacteria. But it's not going to happen for every time because the bacteria will show resistance to a specific bacteria and stuff like that over time. But yeah, it's a simple treatment. We can have like um, antibiotics treatments. It kills but doesn't treat, right? Kills but doesn't treat. That is, it doesn't remove it for every time. It comes back, right? So now there's just plenty of research going for a gene therapy, for example. They wanted to fix a specific CFDR gene so that no longer this chloride transport is being um, deformed, but still, 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 it's not fixed yet, unfortunately. And people with this will die eventually. There's no 100% cure being found so far, but hopefully in the future of coming soon, it will be. And I hope it made sense. Thank you.